and this may be a preference question regarding lumboperitoneal versus ventricular peritoneal yeah. shunts. Yeah. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about that? I know neurosurgeons yeah. are yeah, low. I, I, so that's, a, that's a discussion right there. Uh, my, my briefly, um, ventricular peritoneal shunts, uh, I think are easier to place. Um, they, um, it's, uh, the valve setting, we, these shunts have valves on them. Uh, they sit on the skull. They're much easier to reprogram. The and they tend to ventricular peritoneal shunts tend to work longer. Meaning the stunt, the shunt stays patent. The tubing stays patent for longer, in my experience. Uh, the problem with them is the ventricular collapse. When the ventricles collapse, it doesn't drain as much fluid. It doesn't drain fluid freely communicating between the ventricles anymore. That ventricle almost gets trapped, and so. Um, uh, and and therefore the pressures tend to go up slightly and patients oftentimes feel bad. A way to get around that is to put a second shunt in on the other side, which some, some patients need. It, um, but trying to revise the shunt where you take out the catheter and swing it over to the other bench call, the same process just happens for eight weeks. It's like a recurring issue. It's a big ordeal that we face with these. And if you try to revise them, you try to take the catheter out and just put another one in, it's the same problem you run into repeatedly. Um, lumboperitoneal shunts don't have that same problem. The catheter goes in the back, it sits in the thoracic of the lumbar cistern where there's this big fluid space and, um, and patients are upright. So the fluid just pools in the back. And so you don't have this problem with collapse around the catheter. So they, they tend to drain very effectively and they can drain to really low pressures. You can overdrain patients very easily with a lumboperitoneal shunt. The problem with lumboperitoneal shunts, there's multiple. Number one, um, the catheter that goes into the spinal canal, because it has to go through a two-e needle into the spinal canal, is small. It's a small caliber. And I think they get occluded faster with protein and other junk because of that. So the catheter actually gets blocked faster because of that. Also, there's this whole component of the fact that the fluid that's in the brain is not necessarily equivalent to the fluid that's in the back. Protein cells, things that are heavy, settle by gravity. So the viscosity of the fluid in the spine is probably slightly different. It's probably more viscous. There's more junk in it, which I think adds to the fact that the, the catheter in the spine gets occluded more readily. The valve sits on the side in soft tissue. And because of that, it can move around and it can rotate. And if people are thick and big, it can be hard to reprogram. As you push the reprogrammer down on it, it just pushes away. Unlike the skull where you can set it down and it's a rigid structure. And some of these people, like you can't reprogram their shunts. You try and try and you can't. I've sort of gotten around this to some degree by putting a, a plate. We have these like plates for craniotomies. And if you put a plate behind the valve and kind of tie the valve to it, it keeps it from shifting. You suture the, the plate down in the fat and it keeps it from moving so you can get a better sort of foundation to reprogram on it. But oftentimes you still, you can't do it sometimes and they're locked in whatever position you have to take them back to the OR just to reprogram them, which is a pain in the butt. Um, also, because they're harder to reprogram, you have, you, you, you can't use some of the finer controlled shunt valves. Um, so usually you have to use one with a magnet like a Certus valve, um, which has less settings available. And then finally, the catheter that goes from the side where the valve is placed into the belly, because it's a short distance, oftentimes they back out. When people strain, uh, it's a shorter distance. Uh, and so the catheter will slowly like come out of the belly and coil up on the side. And so it's much more common for these to, to, to come out of the belly into the side pocket and then fail because of that. So I, I all of that taken together, I don't like LP shunts very much. I try, I, I went through a phase where I was putting in a bunch of VP shunts and I was dealing with the ventricular collapse. And I was, well, we'll put in LP shunts. And then I was revising them so often because they kept failing. I've sort of switched back to being a VP shunt, brain to belly preference uh, neurosurgeon. I don't know if maybe that'll change again in a year or two. I, I don't know. I don't like shunts in general, but some people need them. And I found personally that I think VP shunts are just easier to deal with and handle and um, they tend to work longer. 